Now, we've already said that Mark's gospel shows us an amazing Jesus, a Messiah that was different than everyone was expecting. Uh, we're going to see more of that uh, today. We we continue in that story in Mark chapter 3. And now we're, we're in the synagogue there. It says that he entered the synagogue. A man was there with a withered hand. And there are people there, of course, they know Jesus heals. So they're watching to see whether he'll heal. Why? Because it's the Sabbath day. And they've got it in their wrong interpretation of the law that you're not allowed to heal on the Sabbath. Now, he's not buying this at all. He will not go along with their wrong interpretation of the law, even for a second. So they're watching and they want to accuse him. So they're, they're after ultimately his death. They want him out of the picture. And amazingly here, they have this idea of unjustly taking his life, but they're okay with the law, they think. Whereas Jesus, who heals on the Sabbath and brings life to people on the Sabbath, that, that's wrong. They're convinced that. So they're, they're so wrong. They're so off on all this. And so rather than just doing something in a corner, he, he calls the man forward. He says, come here. And then he asks the question, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? <laughs> That's quite a way to put it, right? What are they supposed to say? He looks, it says here, with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart. You know, they are stuck in wrong thinking. And it's just sad. So he just says to the man, stretch out your hand. That's it. And he stretched it out and the hand was restored. And that was a signal to them not to question whether they were right about their thinking. No, they, they decide they're going to get together with the people that have more government connections, the Herodians, and they're going to take counsel with those guys how to destroy Jesus. On the other hand, the crowd, you know, there's a great crowd and they're following him. And this great crowd is coming from everywhere, it's saying, even outside the borders of Israel. And so much so that even in outdoor places, there's not enough room for everybody. So Jesus has to get into a boat so that he doesn't get crushed by the crowd. Meanwhile, he he goes off by himself, you know, and prays. He, he uh, calls 12 apostles that are named here. Again, surprising, they're not the kind of people you would expect for this very important movement of the kingdom of God. He goes home again to Capernaum, and a crowd is there. And it's just like there are a lot of people that are not happy with what Jesus is doing. And among those people are his own family. This is right here in Mark 3. You look at verse 20, follow it through here, and what you see is his own family. Well, they are not with him. They're concerned about him. They want to try and get him out of this situation. They've come to the conclusion that he's out of his mind. Imagine that. And there are religious leaders from Jerusalem, these scribes, these teachers of the law, they agree that he's out of his mind, and, but they go a step further. They say, no, it's more than that. He's actually doing things according to the prince of demons. Now, see, nobody could deny that Jesus is doing miracles. Nobody could deny that he's casting out demons. That was obvious. But they just decide he must be doing it by the prince of demons, Satan, Beelzebul, he's called here. And Jesus comes back at them again. He knows what they're about. He said, look, how can Satan cast out Satan? That doesn't even make any sense. See, that would be a kingdom divided, divided against itself, this kingdom of darkness. And then the kingdom of darkness would not stand. So that can't be like a house divided against itself. That's not going to make it. It's not going to stand. So what's happening instead is I am not in the kingdom of darkness, but I have authority over everything. And so I can tie up the strong man that's binding people in misery. And then I could take over that house of darkness and bring light into it. Isn't that great? So Jesus's mother and brothers, you know, they're just concerned. They want to get him out of there. And 
And so people come to Jesus. Again, quite a big big crowd. They, they, his mother, his brothers can't get to him very easily. And so the message comes from these others. They say, your mother, your brothers are out, outside. They're seeking you. But he says, who are my mother and my brothers? He said, he points to those that are listening to him. He says, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. Listen, are you in the family of Jesus? Look, this, this is what I want. This is what you need. You need to be in the family of Jesus. Father, thank you that you have enabled us by your spirit to hear and love your word and to seek you. We want to follow you, Father. We thank you for Jesus, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.